The memoir of Singapore's first Chief of Defence Force, Winston Chu, has just been launched. It documents the milestones of a man known for institutionalising national service and developing the foundations of the Singapore Armed Forces. Now, the book, A Soldier at Heart, recounts the experiences of Mr Chu from the time he joined the Boys' Brigade as a teenager through his lengthy career in the SAF and his service as Singapore's ambassador to various countries, as well as being the chairman of the Singapore Red Cross. Since all of us have served in the SAF, or have grandfathers, fathers, husbands, brothers, or sons, and now perhaps daughters and sisters who have served in the SAF, it is no exaggeration to say that General Chu has had an impact on every Singaporean. And for more, we're joined by the man himself. Welcome to the programme, sir. Great to have you with us. Uh, we're just in the process of looking back at some of the key milestones of your career. So just sit tight, hang around. I will come to you shortly. But first, we go back to 1965. And that was a pretty significant year for you, isn't it? Because that was after Singapore became independent and you were appointed the first military aide-de-camp to Singapore's first president, Yusuf Ishak. Well, in 1974, Singapore's first defence minister, Dr Goh King Sui, handpicked you to be the SAF Director General Staff, the equivalent then of the Chief of Defence Force. Now, sir, an important appo appointment for you at the age of 33. Uh, how big a challenge was it uh, at that age? Well, John, you know, I was uh, given a heads up by Defence Minister Lu Kin Sui about two years before then that there was the intention to appoint me as chief. Even with that run-up, when I took the job in May 1974, I was very apprehensive. It was uh, something that a 32 or 33-year-old man does not expect ever to take on. There were lots of challenges. I had people who were very senior to me, over whom I had sort of lived for to take the job. So I had to contend with them. Then also, I had to uh, be with other heads of the uh, military in the region who are lots older than I am. So here is this young colonel trying to hop not with all of them. So it was difficult, but I, I played my part. I remembered very, very vividly when Australian general came to see me. And when he met me, he said to me, but you are a boy. So I had to turn around and tell him I may be a boy, but I'm doing a man's work. Right. Before you retired as well as Lieutenant General in 1992, uh, you were the youngest to rise to the ranks of Brigadier General at 35 years old as well as the first professional soldier to be Major General just two years later. Uh, many, many firsts there. Um, what do you make of your sort of meteoric rise through the ranks? You know, I, I may sound, you know, to be self-serving if I said the promotions and, and you know, advancements uh, did not matter to me at that time. But it is true. I was so engrossed and involved in, in my job that I never even thought about that. So when it came, it came. And uh, now looking back, I realized that I was actually appointed at a very young age, younger than most people would have been appointed in those days. You also recounted a little bit just now about your experiences, you know, uh, mixing around with officials and dignitaries. Uh, which missions in your 33 years with the military do you think left the most lasting impression? Well, you know, I mean, I started off with a real life and death mission during confrontation when I was uh, operating in Sabah and in, in Tosa Tinggi. But that aside, the, the mission that actually uh, uh, took me by, 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 by surprise was when I was given the job of uh, doing a survey of the, the security issues in the oil refineries following the Raju uh, event. I do not know many Singaporeans remember it, but uh, Pilar Bufum 
was raided by a group of Japanese Red Army people. So I had to go around to all the oil refineries, make a survey, recommend to the management the changes that they have to do, and to accept my recommendation to take SAF troops to be based in the oil refineries. And I had to do all that in 12 days or so. That was a challenging thing, but uh, then, you know, I was then even not even appointed to, to CDF yet. I was just hit training given by Dr. Zhou a job to test me, I think. Yeah, being and in such situations on, I think the as mission well. That, being in such situations as well, I mean, it must have been difficult, yes. you know, being away from, from family. I, I know you, had a, you have a wife and then two children. Uh, must have been tough being away. Well, you must remember, you know, those days there's no such thing as uh, mobile phones, FaceTime. So when you travel, you don't get a chance to, to make contact with your family. But I had a job to do, and I did it. And I had a wonderful wife who was willing to take care of my children. But whenever I could, I, I made a point to spend time with them, even taking short, short holidays in the region around here. But it was tough. It was tough, and uh, looking back, if you ask me whether I would do the same thing again, I guess I would, but maybe differently. <laughs> I mean, after all, you, you spent a good 18 years uh, as a military chief, and along the way, um, ups and downs as well. What made you really stay the course? Well, like I said, no, I mean, I had a job to do. I'd already been in the job for a couple of years. And uh, nobody has asked me that, that uh, you know, I should not be doing it. So I carried on doing it. I stayed the first, had the mission to do, and carried on. Now, I just want to bring it back to your newly launched memoir. You, you've described it as quite an unlikely endeavor. You even, you know, resisted writing one for years. You know, eventually you changed your mind. What is the legacy that you hope to leave behind, uh, you know, for readers, for future generations as well? Well, you know, when I eventually decided to, uh, to do my memoirs, the legacy I wanted to leave behind was really more for my children and grandchildren and their children. But it is my hope that young Singaporeans will, uh, you know, gain some lessons from this book of the early days of the SAF how we started off you know, with second-hand equipment. We had tough time, but SAF then was not like what the SAF today is. So young Singaporeans should know the SAF, when we first formed, went through a very difficult time. So that kind of story and that's what see, I want them to, to bear in mind and, and know. So I'm sure they're very, very proud of you. Uh, and thank you so much for sparing some time to speak with us. Uh, we've been speaking there with the former Chief of Defence Force, Singapore's first, in fact, Mr Winston Chu.